Hello one and all, welcome back to Northern Thailand. This video is packed with rare, beautiful and venomous species, all of which you can see next year on our Expedition Northern Thailand Herping Tour. The link is in the description. Now to the video. Well, despite all the previous morning drives in the last video producing nothing, we just drove out in the morning and little T.S. Koros crossed the road. I don't know how I retrieved this. There was traffic, so I had to wait and I saw it bolt off into this stuff here. And somehow I just plodded around for a while and spotted them zooming around. And you can see probably for the first time ever on my channel, a juvenile T.S. Koros. Some of you serious experts can correct me if I'm wrong, but for real guys, I have not seen this species in juvenile form or for a long time. I mean, I have seen them, I've seen them crossing the road, but I haven't caught them. And you see super aware with that big, big eye. And unlike the adults, they have these nice, nice little pale bands on the upper body, which is a nice touch. And uh, we're at slightly lower elevation here, but not that low, maybe only like at 900 meters on the mountain. And this guy's active crossing the road in the morning. and. Somehow I massively surprised myself and managed to turn him up out of the grass. Usually, the second a snake touches this stuff, it is gone. But then I just saw him whizzing at my feet and managed to palm him in my hand. And I got this beautiful T.S. Koros in hand here to start the day. And I'm sure this won't be the first snake, but we're off the start to this video with a nice little rat snake. Let's go. Little update, two hours to go of the journey and we've just stopped by to munch upon some pizza. Last opportunity to eat Western food, pretty much. So, uh, gotta take it. I received news that the 7-Eleven was closed where we're going at the only 7-Eleven for like a 50 kilometer radius. So, we're stocking up. That's like the biggest 7-Eleven order ever. What the boss? What the PC rat? What the Batans rats? Oh, I'm kind of sad. We drove the whole way in this pristine, sunny weather. And the second we near our location, you guys can see that rainbow. Double rainbow, in fact. Um, yeah, it's a huge storm cloud ahead and we're probably gonna be getting absolutely soaked, but still, pretty nice view right there. What a welcome to uh, one of my all-time favorite areas of the country. Oh, and after a long day of driving, we have arrived, this time at the beautiful Beauclerc View Resort, which by the way, a little bit of insider information will be the location on our NAN expedition. Exploreherpetology.com, check it out, okay? It's a seriously good one, but I'm here. It's beautiful, absolutely love this joint and I'm about to get out herping. Even though it's nice and clear down here, I heard it was raining really hard up on the mountain, so may not be great for herping tonight. If it's too bad up there, maybe we'll do some lowland stuff, but hey, we're gonna work it out. The weather was kind of like that at the last place and we still got some decent finds, so let's see what shows up. Beautiful sunset view, hoodie on. You know what time it is. Let's get to it. All right, first snake of the night. More of the same from the last video, but just got this little Parius geminatus, um, twin spotted slug snake. And again, it's an absolutely tiny juvenile. Somehow this one is actually the biggest of these I've seen though, which is saying something. Certainly juvenile season for these bright orange snakes, but let's keep moving. Well, I was cruising up on the mountain and uh, who are these guys? <laughs> Sky and David have uh, come up to Nan to join me for a few days. I don't know how long we're gonna stay here, but there's absolutely nothing on the roads. So we're gonna do some hiking, looking for a Vophis mainly. Well, coming along the trail after getting absolutely, well, scared shitless by a boar and Sky just spotted something we were hoping to find tonight after the rain. Look at that. Beautiful mountain pit viper. I think, I don't know what to say about this one. Maybe a young female. What do you think, David? Mm, yeah, it's it's really hard to tell when they're this size because they could be either. It looks like a snake to me. It does look like a snake. But yeah, not one of the common species by any stretch of the imagination. Certainly a, uh, I mean, a lot of people would consider this rare, but more often than not, we do see them when we come up to this part of the country, especially if you get heavy rains. This trail has turned them up in the past. I remember I found a really nice white one along here. And this time, more of sort of a typical orangey, pinkish color of Ophis. Let's see if we can get them to... Okay, now everything's calmed down. It's sat still. Let me tell you a bit more about what happened. So we heard some rustling in the bushes and uh, it was pretty loud. And David was just like, ah, probably just a deer. 
And then we carried on walking on the trail and then all of a sudden a wild boar just charged us. And luckily it stopped a bit before and then ran back away. But we seriously started sprinting in the other direction. And then we kind of weighed up our options and decided to press on through the trail. And then it happened. Sky spotted this little beauty here. How nice. Vophus monticola, the uh, mountain pit viper at a locality I've seen them many times before. They love it here, especially on this trail. This very secretive, uh, terrestrial, almost fossorial viper. It was probably sitting under some leaves um, when we disturbed it and sky spotted it shooting down the bank. Awesome. All right, further along the trail, just got an adult female gump. This is the first one I've seen at this location. Um, it was the only viper at the last location, only green viper, sorry, at the last spot we were in the previous video, but here it's one of three green vipers and the first one I've seen. This one's an adult female with the yellow eye and these occur here only at the highest elevations of the mountain. I'm gonna leave her here. She's looking beautiful though. Here's one of a few other gump we saw. Um, a couple tiny ones knocking around and a male, which I didn't film because we were too busy dealing with a wild boar situation. But this one's absolutely miniature. You seem to see juveniles of these pretty much like from June to December, probably all year round. I think they just, they don't have a distinct breeding season. They just hatching out and uh, or being birthed the whole year. We've seen many, many of these along the trail. Um, most of them in high up since I haven't showed them. But this one, just down the low vegetation. Uh, Sky and David grabbed one earlier and it musked pretty bad. I don't want that to happen to me. <laughs> these stink so bad. I said even before that, I said like these don't usually musk and then it did. So yeah, slug snakes have some of the worst musk, but yeah, nice. Several adults cruising around here. All right, just wrapped up and left David driving back and uh, here's the first green viper on the road. Surprisingly none in the like warmer part of the night. And here at almost 11 p.m. Got a male, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, yeah, male gun practi up at high elevation here. Um, what a lovely little green bean. I'm gonna scoot him off the road and this will almost certainly be the last snake of the night. And I'll catch you guys tomorrow for a very, very long day of herping. Let's go. Ah, oh, all right. Good morning, guys. I am up nice and early and waiting for it to warm up a bit so I can catch the prime time activities. I'll go into detail a little bit more about kind of the weather conditions here and how to select the best conditions for cruising. So if at some point any of you guys find yourself in the mountains of Southeast Asia, really anywhere this applies, can probably help you out. So generally it's quite cold and you know what? Snakes don't like cold. So the best times to be out is when it's warm. So actually, a sunny morning in the summer can be great, but around this time of year, we're looking more towards maybe 10 to 3 p.m. as being the prime time activity. Although if the sun is just out and blazing down, then basically from the morning to 6 p.m. it could be great. But right now, you know, we've got quite a bit of cloud cover, the sun only poking through every few minutes and at certain lower elevations of the mountains. So at this point, definitely better to focus on that window of activity. And also, obviously, I'm road cruising. And the reason road cruising is such a prevalent meta rather than, you know, standing here and looking at this lovely sunlit stretch of road, which should be great for snakes, is because snakes generally take quite a while to cross the road, right? Which means you're actually statistically much more likely to encounter them the more ground you cover. And road cruising just maximizes the amount of kilometers you cover. And because the snakes generally cross quite slowly, especially up here in the mountains where it's cold, it just opens up that window of opportunity a little bit more. But that's enough rambling from me. I hope you enjoyed this little informative segment of a little bit of the science that goes on behind targeting rare species in the mountains. And let's see if we can get something today, guys. Come on. We've got snakes every single daytime thus far, and I'm gonna make it continue. Come on. All right, and here's our first snake of the day. Nothing special, just a, whoa, feisty Ahatila prasina, which is biting itself and definitely gonna bite me in a second. Look at that. At night time, these pretty much almost never bite, right? Very, very rarely bite at night. But in the daytime, you know, their vision is engaged with those telescopic horizontal pupils. And they can see me, all right? He's looking at my phone, following it around. All right, sorry about that. This guy was being such a pain in the ass to film. It was just like, it's impossible to focus on their little head and he was just always like at an angle where it was difficult. But yeah, first snake of the day and hopefully not the last one. You know, I've only seen one species per day so far on this trip. So I'm hoping I can change that around today. There's some clouds over the mountain, but overall the weather's looking great. 
So I'm gonna make sure this guy gets safely across the road and then we can be on our business. All right, just got a snake and what are you? It... Oh, hold on a second. Is this what I think it is? I think it is. Wow. No way, guys. I was so scared to make a call because I thought it could be a strange morph of Oligodon fasciolatus. But you see the way I'm not getting bitten right now? I was able to just pick it up. You see those reddish tints in this coloration? The bands? This is Oligodon joinsoni. Yeah, sorry about the constant cuts, guys. I'm on a really busy road, uh, so I keep having to let these loud, like, cars pass, but it's so cool that we got this, and even better that we managed to get it alive. That makes two snakes we got on this lowland road here, which is, you know, 10 times more traffic than the Highland Road, and yet I've seen actually seen more DORs at the top and less down here, and this time... Got this lifer, Oligod and Joinsonai, Joinson's cookery snake, a rare species to add to the tally and, you know, add a little bit of a variety in something super, super nice to this trip. I think this one is on the early stages of shed. Um, it's not looking as nice in the video as it does to in real life. It's got this cool, like, purplish, orangish, reddish sheen, which is just not coming out at all in the video for some reason. But to my eyes, I see it perfectly. And But there's more traffic coming, so... I'm gonna take this one to take some photos of it and uh, properly appreciate it because I'm really tired right now. I don't know if I was as enthusiastic as I should have been, but this is a great find. All right, boys and girls, I was rushing my dinner so I didn't film an intro to the night, but you guys can see it's just got dark and we're getting out herping. Let's go. First snake out on the road tonight. Um, before it got fully dark is this little juvenile Gumprecti, but we're really trying to make the most of this prime time. So I'm gonna flick it off the road right now. Oh, well, here's a familiar sight, just as it's getting dark. A very familiar sight. Um, you guys will remember from the previous video, I caught a lot of these. Um, it's Gonyosoma ceruleum, by the way. And these guys love to bite the shit out of people. Also, I can hear a huge truck coming, so I'll catch you in a bit. So we all went out road cruising together, and the first actual properly good find. Look at that incredible snake. Most people will recognize this, um, the red bamboo rat snake, Oreo cryptophis porphyracea pulchra. So uh, typically the common name should be the Yunnan, Yunnan red bamboo rat snake or Yunnan bamboo rat snake. I don't know, the bamboo part is kind of random. They have that in a lot of these old world rat snakes names, but it sure as hell is a nice snake. What's tragic is we saw like a fresh DOR one of these in the late afternoon that was huge. And I was like, man, am I even gonna see this species this year? But November is a great month for it. And this one was out cruising at night around 8 p.m., 7.45, 8 p.m., I think. And uh, they would, these guys do have a habit of biting, but they have very tiny teeth. And they've got quite a cool ecology, I'd say. Basically living a semi-fossorial life, um, dwelling under moss carpets and leaf litter, and preying primarily on baby birds and baby mice, like the tiny, tiny pinky mice when they're still in their nest. And because of that, they don't need sharp teeth because they prey on these kind of soft bodies, soft bodied, almost defenseless animals. But this is renowned around the world for being one of the most beautiful snakes and for a reason. And I will go out on the limb and say, this is not one of the most beautiful individuals. This one is uh, not particularly orange and not particularly red. You know, it's not too vibrant at all. But even that alone is just such a stunning animal. And uh, yeah, a really great find. These are generally, easier to find in this area than anywhere else in my opinion especially in the months of like september to november um earlier when we were here in june we didn't even see a trace of them not even one dor but they're quite active at this time and this beauty was crossing the road today what an absolute gem fantastic okay guys i've done what i should have done a long time ago and i've put my gloves on that i wear while driving to handle what is i'm going to go ahead and say it after encountering so many of them on this particular trip, I'm gonna say that this is the bitiest snake in Thailand. And it has the sharpest teeth as well, which is just the worst combination ever. I mean, look at it go. 
generally we associate these montane kind of cold weather dwelling snakes with being placid but these just bite and bite and bite and bite and never stop and it really undermines their their elegance and their beauty and uh yeah it, the worst thing about it is that they have huge teeth and it just tears you up you know i caught this one off the road rescued it undoubtedly from getting absolutely flattened by a truck and just got cut up so badly the only problem with wearing gloves is that I can't actually touch the focus point on my uh, camera. So I'm just kind of relying on the, the autofocus feature right here and I can't adjust the exposure, but we're getting something. We're getting something, you know, sometimes when a snake bites so much, it can bite and uh, you can actually get a look at it. But it's nice to uh, get you, it's nice to get something myself tonight. David got that really nice bamboo rat snake and I got a different bamboo rat snake, the green variety. Awesome. Here's a particularly large and very vibrant orange, uh, Geminatus. You know, these have been described as Geminatus for years now, and I still, without fail, always go to call them Hamptonite, which is their all old name. But these are everywhere at these high elevations. Um, no matter what the weather is, rain or dry like tonight, if you walk around and scan the bushes, you'll eventually see one of these bright glowing things creeping around very slowly. And it's so cold to the touch, but doesn't matter for him. He cruises around very slowly, gobbling up slugs and snails, which certainly does not take much energy. So let's put him right back. So I found this little sleeping uh, transition morph brass. You know, it's brown, but uh, not too small. And you can see the green starting to come in on the head now. Um, you know, the species is very common. I overlooked them a lot, but I figured why not show this one on the channel? Because it's kind of an interesting morph here and of course a lot of people especially people who haven't herped in asia extensively love this species and even some people who do herp in, in asia are very fond of vine snakes you just get quite blasé to these over time but still a snake is a snake and uh when it's freezing cold up here you take anything you can get and this is just another addition to the night so very nice hey there's a rare sight a snake crossing the road lycodon fasciatus to be specific and hold on let me put on a better filming light this is, uh, let's put it simply, one of very, very few snakes seen on the road tonight. Um, I've been cruising for a couple hours now and there hasn't been much around, but thankfully this guy decided to cross the road and has immediately made my night just that little bit better. Should I talk a little about this species for those that don't remember from the old videos? Well, it's a wolf snake. Um, usually they bite the crud out of you. This one isn't. The ones up here, even an adult size, tend to be very, very white, unlike ones in other parts of the country, which often have touches of yellow and orange. And they cruise around at night eating geckos and other like lizards, skinks, etc. Um, these ones have a, this nice kind of a, what do I call it? A jigsaw kind of shaped bands towards the tail, which is one of the ways you distinguish these, as well as a slightly different head. But the, particularly these jigsaw shaped bands, and the very, very clearly banded venter is how I can recognize this one off the rip from the several other banded snakes that occur in this area. But yeah, very nice um, little addition. Let's keep going and see if anything else shows up. <laughs> All right, guys, just checking in. Just checking in for the introduction of this video from a gas station. I left super early in the morning from Nan today and just didn't get any time to film. Just been driving on the road, moving since, but we're just fueling up the tank and heading back to another spot to try and get a couple species. It's getting really late in the year now and it's getting cold up in the mountains, but there's still stuff active and we got time to kill. So we figured why not spend a few more days in the mountains and try and get something rare. But that's it for this little impromptu intro. I'll catch up with you when we arrive on location. And we are arriving back in the mountains again. And I'm kind of happy to be back. You know, it wasn't crazy good when we were here before earlier in the trip, but we definitely saw some nice stuff, uh, some very nice stuff, and it was a very enjoyable place to be. I won't be hiring a bike this time because honestly, it was just too damn cold, uh, just freezing. Um, and the difference is not too much using fuel of this car, maybe like I'm paying a $10 extra per day or something, but that's not crazy. So we'll roll with it. And we're about to do a 20, 30 minute drive through the national park see if anything's out in the late afternoon. Otherwise, I'll catch you at sunset. Yes! Yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> Pseudozenodon! Holy crap, guys. I did not expect to get this 
at pitch black nighttime. I was really hoping to encounter one of these this trip. I saw two DOR here earlier in the week when I was at this spot. And at nighttime, this huge individual is just sat on the road and is uh, absolutely freezing cold and behaving very odd. I considered whether it could be DOR, but there's not a single scratch on the body. And honestly, no car has even been passed. I don't think it could even be hit, but I think it's just freezing cold and acting very strange because it's nighttime. But uh, I'll, I'll look at it for a while and take a closer look. But yeah, it's definitely alive. You saw it tongue flicking. You see its head. You know, it's resting its head up. It's capable of moving around. Just doesn't seem to want to move much. All right, I took a closer look at it. And uh, yeah, it's definitely, I think it's just freezing cold with a meal inside and generally acting strange because it's night and it probably can't really see anything, especially my shining my light. You see, I was, I thought the back of the body was like injured, but it's wrapping its tail around me right now, moving fine, all parts of the body just seems really, really cold. My guess as to what it's doing out here at night is it was eating a meal at sunset when these can be active, just got it in and was trying to return to some kind of feeding place. It was probably eating in this drainage ditch right here. And maybe it's kind of like typical resting location or burrow is over there. But yeah, this is amazing, guys. Large eyed false cobra. I've shown this on my channel last year, but not in proper vlog style. And uh, this is a big one, biggest one I've ever seen by a huge margin. And it's not spreading a hood at all because I don't think it really knows what the hell's going on. Um, but yeah, hold on. Let me turn the lights off. I'm going, I'm going to blind these people. I got my huge freaking Iron Man lights on in the car. Yeah, got these big boy Iron Man lights and I would have been real sad for these people. They wouldn't be able to see shit, but yeah, definitely getting the camera out for this. Yeah, let's take a closer look at that head just before I, I keep moving because I really want to keep cruising. It's got this really cool pink coloration there. It almost becomes red for a patch. All right, just got my second snake of the night, which is a wolf snake. Um, we saw one of these tiny juvenile uh, last time I was here, earlier in the week, but this time we got a big adult active at almost 1,700 meters above sea level. Um, I'm not sure exactly what we're at, but I say we're pretty close to that. The, uh, the large-eyed false cobra was actually at around 1,700, but this time got a lovely crate-like lichen crossing the road. I've been out here for a few hours. I started cruising at five and I think it's just gone eight. So second snake in three hours out here, but it's good, man. I think I cracked the meta. I figured out what the warmest part of the road is and I've just been passing that section. The final night I was here was great and I'm back here running this meta and I'm finding more than I did on the uh, previous, on the first nights that I came here when I was checking it out. And this guy's being uh, really lovely and cooperative here. What a, what a gem. I like that. Look at its little head. This species has a really wide distribution in Thailand, like the Chapaensis. I'm not sure, did I, did I call it that at the beginning of this clip? I have a feeling I might have called it the wrong ID, okay? So retrospectively, I have realized that. It's just when I spot a snake on the road, generally, guys, I'm quite like rail with adrenaline and I'm like rushing and uh, trying to focus on handling, IDing everything at the same time and I can, you know, slip up with my words. So bear with me on that. And this guy's acting like he's DOR now. <laughs> Look at this. I can just pick up a, ooh, he's hissing, he's hissing. I don't want to get that iconic wolf snake bite. And I've seen photographed this species many times before, so I'm gonna run him off the road. All right, that false cobra was a fantastic start to the night. It's a, kind of a shame that it didn't hood for us, you know, a bit too lethargic at night, but uh, yeah, what a treat to see that species after seeing two super fresh DOR when I was here earlier in the week. Now, we're gonna stay out cruising, see what else shows up, um, but I won't stay out too late tonight. It tends to get cold pretty, quickly after like 7 p.m. So uh, yeah, we'll just run it and then if stuff shows up, then maybe we'll stay out later, but we'll see how it goes, guys. I'm feeling pretty inspired right now, hoping something else shows up on the road. Let's go. All right, here's snake number three, all in the good section of road. Just as I was about to wrap up, this female Gumprecti is crossing the road, which is a good sign. Um, it's actually not too cold here at all. Definitely the warmest night compared to when I was here earlier. You can see that, that lovely yellow eye. Not gonna touch her. No reason to, just maybe I'll stamp a little bit here to make sure she gets a move on away from this road. Although traffic's totally dried up now. It's a, it's a ghost town around here. So see you little girl. All right guys, uh, three snakes down. And as you can see there, 
it's almost 9 p.m. So I think I'm gonna wrap it up there. You know, this is a holiday for me, but I've still got work. So I'm gonna be on my computer tonight, making sure I'm staying on top of stuff, you know, administration and all that. But yeah, this will probably be the routine, making the most out of the prime hours in the evening and then getting out in the daytime. And I will certainly be getting out in the daytime tomorrow, cruising, walking, what have you. So I'll catch you in a couple seconds. All right, guys, welcome back to the next day. After a pretty successful evening, it's actually around 3 p.m. right now because I spent the whole day putting the final touches on something very, very exciting. It's a herping expedition to Northern Thailand where you can come and see the kind of snakes we've been seeing in the last couple of videos and more. Check it out, link in the description. But now I'm done with that, I'm about to head out for a little hour of cruising, then I'm gonna grab some dinner and then get out at sunset to try and find my target species or anything good really. It's so enjoyable being here the last couple of days of the year before it gets too cold. Last chance to enjoy Northern Thailand this year. Let's go. Another day, another Gonyosoma cerulean crossing the road and another hatchling to boot. These guys have been uh, by far the most common non-green viper of slug snake of the trip. And are you gonna bite? Are you gonna bite, little man? It was biting me a second ago. Uh, I, I jumped out the car without my phone because it was very close to the edge of the road and I just wanted to secure the find, but gorgeous little snake here. We've seen so many of these across the last two videos, especially last time I was here, but they never get old. They're exquisite. And uh, other than this particular location, they're not common either. Yes, we did get two in Nan, but generally at certain times of year, you'll remember when I was there in June, we saw absolutely none. But lovely to see this on the road after you're not even 30 minutes of getting out cruising. Daytime snake, you'll love to see it. Nothing after that green rat snake and I'm done eating. So time to, oh, I almost fell over getting into the car. Stop making that noise. It's time to drop Cass off at the room and then begin sunset cruising. And uh, it's been a nice warm day here. I'm sure there'll be something active. Let's see what it is. All right, just before dark and look who it is. The most, or one of the most common snakes in the area. You know, probably the green vipers, the slug snakes are more common. But from what I've experienced, these guys are incredibly abundant here. And uh, yeah, it's still, it's still light out. It hasn't quite got dark yet. It's uh, going on like 5.30ish, 5.45ish now, uh, which is prime time for cruising. So I'm gonna drop this guy off the road and keep going. Oh, angry little fella, angry little fella. But it's this uh, nice adult Parius geminatus. Very, very, very reduced patterning on this one and quite kind of brown in coloration, not the typical kind of more reddish oranges, purplish orange that the species can be, as I'm sure you've seen in the past, especially if you've watched my Northern Thailand videos. Definitely one of the most common snakes, but nowhere near as common here as they are in Nan. That's for sure. That's one thing I've noticed. We saw a couple of juveniles last time we were out here, but this is the first adult I've seen in this area. And it's a big one. It's a big one for sure. Looking grand here, but uh, I don't want to miss out on any more prime time of cruising. So let's let him get back to where he's going. Just crossing the road incredibly slowly. Um, truly, it was quite surprisingly slow, like inching its way, like... Yeah, I won't do your head in with that. Let's keep going. Unfortunately, only got a couple of other fresh DORs tonight. Um, too gruesome to show on the channel as well, but nothing too rare, nothing too heartbreaking. Just like a Cassie Keelback and uh, a Gonya Soma. But this uh, little mountain slug snake was just active moving around. So I figured I'd show it before we move on. All right, conditions have deteriorated uh, significantly since I got that last Viper. But sometimes these sort of cloudy patches, they just blow through. So uh, we'll keep persevering. And if it gets too bad, maybe I'll hop out the car, do some walking. I just hopped out the car and after a little bit of walking, slugger chilling in the forest. First time we've seen one in this area that's like in situ and it's a lovely little juvenile here. You kind of see my hand next to it with a quite strong banding as well. Don't know what was going on with the focus there guys, but I think I've sorted it out now. You can see this very, very nicely patterned slugger. I just jumped back in the car to head back. It's uh, almost gone 9 p.m. now, and I want to get up super early tomorrow. And not too interested in just, you know, driving about, catching green vipers, especially ones which are. Hey, give me a little look at you. Are you? Yeah, nice male here. 
And that's gonna wrap things up for the Northern Thailand November series. I could have made this four episodes, but I packed it into two super length ones. But don't worry, more videos coming very soon. So make sure you like, comment, subscribe, you know, all that good stuff. Help out the channel and I'll catch you very, very soon for a very special video. Not Thailand. That's the only clue I'll give. Peace.